Good morning, friends. It's Sue Fuller and Linda Mori coming to you from South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church this blustery February 22nd um, of 2021. We, um, it looked like it was much worse out this morning than when I actually got out. It's, it's actually warmed up a little bit. So um, hopefully some of this snow might melt. That would be kind of nice because I don't know about you, but I'm kind of sick and tired of the snow. <laughs> As beautiful as it is, I'm ready for spring, and I think um, we all are. I have a, a few just real quick announcements um, to make. Well, one first thing is that when we're doing our joys and concerns, we've for some of you who watch at Facebook Live, you get to see it as it happens, and then we put it on the Facebook page. But because we mentioned so many names and last names, um, we've kept it off YouTube and off the um, app and off the web page so if some of you which those of you who are tuning in this morning see it on Facebook but for those of you who might watch this later um, I'm going to try really hard today not to mention last names because we are going to put that put it on the um, on the app and on the YouTube channel so more people can from our church can see um, and watch our on Monday mornings our how they can be praying so I'm going to try really hard not to mention last names. It might take me a few weeks until I get it down. If you have any questions, um, just just private message me or call the church or or call me, and I can give you some more information with last names. But we're just really trying to protect everybody's privacy, um, not knowing how much information they want out to the whole wide world. But um, most of the things that are mentioned... Um, I've gotten pre-approval for. We don't just usually mention somebody's name without them knowing that we're going to do that. But just so you, if I just mention the first name, you're not like, why isn't she saying <laughs> the rest of it? So just just bear with me today as, as I try a little bit harder to do that. Um, also, the children's um, ministry team met a couple weeks ago, and Kim Peters and I have been talking, and there's some others that we're planning some activities for the kids for Easter, and you'll be getting more information about that this week in the, the Thursday Blast and in the next couple weeks to come. But I wanted to get this little tidbit out there. We are going to, we're not going to have an Easter egg hunt, but we are going to do something with Easter eggs and candy. So if any of you are out doing your shopping or would like to make a donation of small pieces of Easter candy that could fit inside of an Easter egg, we're going to be starting to stuff Easter eggs soon. Um, just <laughs> there was a question yesterday. We had all the eggs kind of ready for Easter last year, but we had to throw that candy away. So we're not reusing last year's candy um, this year. So we're asking that if you happen to be at the store and you want to pick up a, a bag of Easter candy to donate for us, we're going to start stuffing Easter eggs. But I'll be um, letting you know some more information about that, um, our Easter plans coming up in the next in the next couple of weeks, because it's... After this week, it's March already, and Easter is the first week in April, so the time's going to go really fast, but the sooner we can start stuffing a bazillion eggs, the better it's going to be for all of us. So if you do, if you're coming into church, we'll have a place that you can just stick the, the bag of candy. If you donate when you come on Sunday morning, if any of you need us to pick it up at your house, if you aren't coming to in-person worship, we'd be glad to do that too. So just kind of putting that out there for y'all. Um, also, this week, um, Linda, I'm going to say her name because she's on the thing, Linda Mori is going to be, um, she is going to be starting a new Bible study on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock here at the church. What's the name of the book? The Walk. The Walk. Um, it's an Adam Hamilton book, and I think you'll really be blessed. So if you aren't a part of a small group right now and you're looking at a way to kind of inch yourself back into some group group things here at the church, it'll be a really great study. Everybody will be socially distanced, wear their masks, all those things. But um, come be a part of that. But please contact Linda Mori so she knows how many tables and everything to set up. Um, if you can, if you don't call her ahead of time and Wednesday night you just decide you want to come, just come. Six o'clock on Wednesday night starting this week. And then this Saturday night, um, Chris Leffler has organized a uh, a watch party here in the sanctuary at eight o'clock 
for a live Christian concert that um, a free live Christian concert. So if any of you are interested in coming, just come on out on Saturday night at eight o'clock. Again, we'll do all the things that we do on Sunday morning. We'll have people taking temperatures at the door, hand sanitizer, socially distanced, but it will be a really great night of worship. And so if you'd like to be a part of that, we'd love to have you come out Saturday night at eight o'clock. All right, let's get into, oh, one more thing. We've been talking a lot about, um, about Lent and, and different things. And I heard something the other day on the radio, and I just wanted to share real quick with you um, what I'm doing personally for Lent this year. I'm not really good at giving things up. Um, I'm not really good at <laughs> making these um, do every day kind of things. And so I was listening to the radio the other day, and I heard um, a pastor teaching about paying attention. And I was just really challenged from the Lord because, you know, we come to church on Sunday morning, we listen to the devotions during the week. Um, some of us have our, you know, our quiet times, our study times, or our small group, group times, and we hear scriptures um, a lot. But my challenge this year for myself, and maybe for you, and that I heard in this teaching was to pay attention with intention of applying it. And so that's kind of what I'm doing during this la this ad, I keep wanting to say Advent, Lent, se Lenten season, is when I hear a scripture, when I hear a teaching, when I hear a devotion, that I pay attention and that I apply it with intention into my life. So we think we always do that, but how many times do we listen to something and we think, oh, it's such a great idea. But, you know, God's word and God speaks to us through his word, and he wants us not just to hear it and say, oh, yeah, that's a really great thing for Christians to do, and not really apply it to our lives. So my challenge for you during Lent this time is to um, pay attention with intention to apply it to your life. So that's what I'm working on um, this, this Lenten season. So getting into um, our joys and concerns today, um, as Gordy mentioned yesterday, we're praying for um, Jim, our guitar player, um, with the passing of his brother, Randy, um, of COVID this week. So let's be praying for Jim and for Paula and their families as they're really struggling right now with, with the loss of his brother. Um, you know, we've all been affected by COVID in ways of changing our lifestyle, but when it comes to you that you lose a close family member from it, it takes it to a whole new level. And so let's be, let's be lifting them up in prayer. Um, Brenda asked us to be praying for her nephew, Mitchell, who's going to be having surgery this week. We mentioned him a couple weeks ago. He um, is having a routine surgery, but he's had diabetes for years, childhood diabetes. And, and so he's had some complications before when he's had surgeries with like tonsil removal. And so he's really anxious about it. So let's just be lifting Mitchell up in prayer. Um, that there'll be no complications at all with his surgery and that he'll be um, recovering. Mike, one of our retired um, members of our church, had surgery last week, and he's also recovering. Everything went well. He's, um, he's doing well, but let's um, be praying for him and just that he's feeling better soon. John and Sandy, we want to continue to be praying for them and lifting them up with John's health concerns. Again, they were in worship with us yesterday and we're so glad um, that they were here in person with us. I gotta tell you, it's really frustrating because we all are trying as hard as we can to follow the guidelines and that means no mingling and talking that usually on Sunday mornings I could do a sweep and kind of get caught up on what everybody's doing and how they're doing, but I know that we need to continue to be lifting John and Sandy up. We wanna be praying for little Lowen um, last week, she was in Pittsburgh Hospital. They were doing like week long, I think it's called EEGs or testing her brain activity because she's been having some seizures and they weren't able to really catch anything, um, even though she was hooked up to the, the monitors and stuff all week. So um, just be praying for her family and for little Lowen as she continues to go through treatments and testing. Let's be praying for her parents and her her siblings, and just that God would would surround them. Last week, we prayed for Jill's dad, Lanny, who um, 
was taken to the hospital in Punxsutawney last week and she spent the week down there with him but he's doing much better and he's not going to be having any surgery for now but um, we're just thankful that she was able to be there with him and that um, they got to spend some time together last week as we have elderly parents sometimes it's harder and harder um, to find the time or take the time to spend with them but I know that um, that it was a good time for them last week and, and we're really praising God for that. We wanna be praying for Dorothy and her great grandson, Tyler, who's in Pittsburgh Hospital. Um, he was there, we've been praying for Dorothy for a couple weeks <clears throat> and for her great grandson and they came home, but then they had to take him back last week. So it, was, it went around on the prayer chain, let's be praying for Tyler and um, just for healing for him and for the doctors to know what's going on and, and the best way to, to treat him. We wanna be praying for um, Sherry and just continued prayers for her health concerns. Um, Jerry mentioned her yesterday when he was in church and asked Gordy to be praying. So we're praying for you and we're lifting you up that, that whatever's going on that they're able to find out and, and just treat and you'll be feeling better. But we're praying that God would just surround you during this time. We wanna be praying for Paul um, and thanks to everybody who reached out last week and sent him a birthday card or a note on Facebook. Stephanie was telling me yesterday that she made a poster. She's so ambitious. She made a poster of all the the Facebook uh, messages that people had sent so that they could take it into her dad so that um, at the nursing home at Elmwood Garden so that he could read them and see them and just know how much people are thinking of him and, and praying for him and celebrating his life. We want to be list, lifting up the youth and the kids. We had a, a parent meeting last night, just making some plans for the spring. There's going to be a youth conference in Erie this year, that spark that we've gone to in the years past. It's going to be a one-day conference on April 17th in, in Erie, so that's kind of good for us this year. But the kids are so anxious to spend time together. They like to do overnights. They like to do all those kind of things. But we're just being so extra safe and extra cautious with them with um, with COVID. So we're just going to have a one day thing. So they're going to be kind of disappointed. But let's be praying for that conference that enough people sign up that it's able to go through. And because um, it's really a time of um, encouragement for the kids to to be around other other believers and also a great outreach for them to invite friends to come. So we want to be praying for the youth and we want to be praying for our children too. Um, we're trying really hard, like I said, about the Easter plans to, to make some events that the kids can feel a part, that they can have some kind of connection with our church family, um, and also learn and study and grow in their understanding of Easter and, and what that means for them. We want to be praying for Dave and just continued health concerns for him, Dave and Colleen, and, and we just love them and are lifting them up to the Lord. Um, this week I saw on Facebook also Emma, who's a part, who was a part of our church when I was growing up, and, and her handicapped son, um, Conrad, um, or medically fragile, that's probably a much better way to say it than handicapped, but her son, Conrad, has a lot of um, continuing medical issues, and she is such a huge advocate for him, not that parents normally aren't, but um, it is it's very wearying and so let's be praying for for Emma and for Conrad and just that they get the things that they need to um, to keep him healthy and um, just strength and patience for Emma as well and the last one I have um, is Dr. Sion which it's all out there anyhow so everybody knows his last name but let's be continuing to pray for him he's an orthopedic doctor here in Erie who, as I've mentioned before, has COVID, and he um, he's awaiting a lung transplant in Pittsburgh. Um, COVID has just really destroyed his his lungs and their capacity to work. So let's be praying for Dr. Sion and his wife, and they have a young daughter as well, just as they're waiting for knowing that um, a lung transplant is going to save his life, but also being um, empathetic to the fact that someone else's life is going to end for his life to continue. So let's be praying for Dr. Sion and all those that are going through cancer treatments right now. We have a lot in our church family that um, are either in recovery from um, breast cancer or other kinds of cancers or 
looking ahead to starting treatments for different types of cancers and other things. And, and even though we don't, and this morning I'm not mentioning you by name, we love you. We're lifting you up. For those that have recovered, we're praising God for that and praying for continued good health for you. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you this day. We thank you that we can come together as your body. As a church family, we can come together and lift up our joys and concerns to you. But Father, we're so grateful that you are a God that we can approach, that you want us to set aside time to speak with you, that you're available to us 24-7, to talk to, to share the things that are on our hearts, to thank you for the good things in our life, to lift up those things that, those issues and problems that we don't have any idea how to fix. But Lord, we trust you and we lay them in your hands. Father, if we think about just for a minute the ways that we have seen you at work in our lives, that we have experienced your goodness and your touch in our families' lives, the healing in our bodies and our spirits and in our minds. If we just stop to think about your goodness and your faithfulness, Father, how can we help not sharing that with others? Father, I thank you that this is a church that preaches your truth that you are the way. I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Keith and, and his message yesterday and just the foundation that it lays for us to know on which rock we stand, and that is you, the one that never crumbles, that never, never leaves us drifting away, Father, but you are a solid promise of hope and love and redemption. Father, I lift up this morning all those joys and concerns on our hearts. There's so much hurt going on. There's so many um, medical concerns, health concerns. But Lord, we pray for you to touch those bodies, to heal them. But Lord, we're also asking you to intervene in the lives of all those people that are hurting right now and those who love those that are hurting. Sometimes the pain that we experience from illness or something else is, is obviously physical pain, but it's also that uncertainty of, will I get better? Is it going to be hard? What is, how is this going to affect my family? How is this going to affect my life? How is this going to affect everything about me and everything that I do. And so, Lord, we're, we're asking for your physical touch on their bodies, but also your spiritual touch on their hearts. Calm them. Give them your peace. Give them your joy, all the fruit of your spirit this very day. Lord, we want to lift up the families of our church, for the teenagers, for the children, for the parents of those, those kids. This has been such a, an odd year for all of us. But if we stop to look at the ways that we have seen you at work in our families, the way we have seen you at work in our personal lives, and in um, and just the kids' education and all those things, Lord, there are struggles, but there are so many joys and so many bonus things that we never, ever expected. So, Father, I pray that you would help Help us keep our eyes on you. Help us to turn away from the things that you don't want us to be a part of anymore and focus and look ahead at the things that, the new ways that you're opening up to us. Father, I pray for our country. I lift up the leaders to you right now and all the decisions that are being made. I pray, Father, for wisdom, your supernatural wisdom and, and knowing just which way to go. I pray, Lord, for just the leadership over the, the vaccines and the COVID treatments and the testing. I pray for the doctors and the nurses and the medical workers that are so weary. 
for all the essential workers who have worked and worked all through this um, this pandemic and, and are also so very weary. We lift them up to you. Father, help us. Help us, Lord, to shine your light in this darkness. Help us to have a contagiousness of joy and hope when there's so much negativity around us. Help us to be your light. The light on the hill up here in Harbor Creek, but not just here, but be your light in our families, in our workplaces, in our country, and around the world. Father, those ministries that we're a part of around the world that we have supported with our finances and with our prayers, we lift them up to you and we ask that you would touch them this very day. Give them encouragement. Give them um, just new avenues to share the gospel, to share the truth of Jesus with others. Lord, there's so many other things on our hearts that I haven't mentioned this morning. For, so for all those unspoken requests, Lord, we, we lift them up to you. Help us to trust you. Help us to seek your, your truth. Help us to pay attention with intention of applying it to our lives. Speak to us this day through your Holy Spirit. Speak to us through others. Speak to us through your word so that we can be all that you've called us to be. Lord, we ask that you would be with us now as we pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks, friends, for being with us today. Um, I was, As I was praying and listening to Linda's music, I was getting a little distracted just because it was so beautiful. So I really appreciate her coming and having her angelic music behind me when, when we pray together. But I hope you have a really great day. Know how much you're loved. If you have any need or any question or any joy or concern that we can be praying for you, please, please, please contact the church office. Have a really, really blessed day.